Hey guys, Coach Adam here with another Coach Adam's Bikini TV show review. That's right, we are in show review territory. It's the first show of the year. I am super, super excited to get this season started. And we start off with a banger. We are looking at the Japan Pro, the Muscle Contest Japan Pro Bikini Class. And there were some huge upsets at this show. I was actually shocked at this show because when I saw the roster of this show, there wasn't any big names that I saw. I was like, okay, there's not really any big names. There was a competitor who just came out of the Olympia who made top 15. So I was like, this is going to be a walk-off home run for her. No problem. She's going to qualify for the Olympia again. We probably won't see her until next year's Olympia. But that did not happen. Actually, she finished outside of the top five. So who were the women who knocked her out, who knocked out the highest ranking bikini pro doing that show, who just got off the Olympia, getting 12th place, who knocked her down all the way to six? Let's take a look at it. So let's jump right into it with Eureka Shigemoto. So Eureka just came off the Olympia getting 12th place and came into the Japan Pro. Everyone was saying that she's the clear favorite going into this show. And honestly, she is. She, there, was, there was no one even close to her ranking going into this show, but she ended up in sixth place. So what went wrong with Eureka? So let's go ahead and take a look at her overall physique. When we look at her physique and we compare it to the Olympia physique where she just got 12th place in the world at the hardest Olympia ever with 56 people on stage, what was the biggest difference? So looking right away at her Olympia pictures is what we had to bring up to see, okay, what was the biggest difference here? Was her condition super off from the Olympia to the Japan Pro just a few months later? Um, actually, just a couple months later. What was the big difference? Was her conditioning significantly off? Now, I will say these pictures are a lot darker, so it's harder to fully assess how good her physique is in comparison. But when I zoomed in on this and looked really closely at from her at every angle, there wasn't a significant difference in the level of conditioning between the two pictures. Her posing seems to be exactly the same. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any major factors that should have her not winning this competition or at least not placing you know, top two, top three in this competition where there's like an obvious flaw like oh she was way too soft oh she was super flat there's nothing that really stands out to push her so far below people that are ranked so far below her you know as of this year she is the 12th ranked bikini pro in the world so when you have her getting sixth place at a at a smaller show where there's not any really ranked competitors in there i think actually she's the only ranked competitor in that show um it's kind of a big deal you're like what happened there right was it just a completely different judging pattern um, and that's really where I'm kind of more leading to believe it was just a different judge, had a different look for her that, you know, in, you know, bikini is a subjective sport. And I think this is an important lesson for everyone to learn is that in bikini, there's never going to be a safe day. You can go in being Miss Olympia, go into a small show and still not win the show because bikini is very subjective. It's a very subjective class. So you remember, you could be too muscular, you could be too lean. Um, there's all these limiting factors that where you could only, you could be so only be so much of something, right? And, and then as soon as you pass it, usually you get knocked down. I don't see her being significantly different where she should be placing that low in this one. Um, I don't know who the head judge was at this show, but in my opinion, a little bit, I don't see a way where she can go from 12th place at the Olympia to 6th place in this group looking the way she does. Now, looking at her front pose, when we're looking at her overall conditioning, we're looking at her overall balance and everything, there's not a big difference. I will say she's pushing a tiny bit harder in her hips here on that front pose. But nothing crazy, you know, there's nothing so, you know, stark about this where I'm like, wow, it's she's way up. It's just it's very, very close to her last look at the Olympia. Now, I did see one flaw, but I don't know if it's that fatal of a flaw that is in her back shot. So in her back shot, you know, when you're looking at the conditioning, when you first look at these pictures, you say, oh, yeah, she's she doesn't have as much tie in here as she did at the Olympia. That's where the biggest difference is. Her tie ins are a lot different. Um, and that's where she, you know, she missed her conditioning. But really, when you look closely, the, it's the pictures that are a lot darker. There's not a huge difference in her conditioning. And, and I looked really closely at this. I'm like, are Italians still there? Are they really there? And it's just the lighting is completely different on her um, at this show. You know, black, black backdrop, just not as big, not as bright lighting. You know, Olympia has the best lighting, of course. It's the biggest show of the, of the year. So the lighting's going to be absolutely perfect there. Um, but looking at her overall shape and her conditioning, it's it's not that much different um, now. But what I will say is look at this oil on her glutes. I mean, you could clearly see just like a glob of oil, a glob of oil here. Whoever did her oil really messed her up for this one. And that's a very unfortunate thing. I don't know if that would be a, you know, first place to sixth place type of scenario. I don't think it would be, honestly. 
I think that would be like, you know, maybe, gosh, more times than not, the judges are going to say, you know, you watch your oil. Um, in a group like this, uh, maybe she'd get like a second place for just presentation, right? Not having, you got to have a perfect tan, hair, makeup, all that. Um, and oil is something that people don't really think about. You know, you have to have someone look at you from top to bottom, front to back, make sure all your oils even, you know, when I'm backstage with, with my pros, I'll look them over and I'll like make them kind of move in the light and make sure that the oil is even, you know, I don't, maybe her coach wasn't there back there. I will say I've been to Japan before. Um, the tanning in oil in Japan is different than the tanning in oil in the United States. And the only reason I say that is that there's just a lot less practice in Japan. You get a lot less experienced tanners, a lot less experienced oil people because there's just less shows. You know, you might have someone doing one show a year. And so when I went over there uh, with one of my athletes, they, they sprayed him with the tan and then they sprayed him again with the tan and then they like over sprayed him with the tan and they were like super, super dark, super blotchy, um, you know, and that's just, that was my only experience that I have over there. So that's the only thing I could really speak to. And that was a couple years back. So I don't know if that's just a, a consistent thing. But what I will say is if you're a, a Japanese athlete or an athlete in Japan, you they, uh, pay special attention to who's tanning you, pay special attention, give them instructions on how you get tan. If you're really, really light, be careful with how much they put on you. Um, maybe even do your own tan out there. Maybe you just use protein and do it yourself. But that's something, you know, make sure you're doing your own oil, have your coach do your oil, whatever the case is to make sure you get this right. Again, you know, this is, this is a lot. This is a lot of oil. So this would be one of those scenarios where I'm like, well, maybe they did drop her that much, but that seems to be a pretty big penalty for that. Now, the other things I see with her physique, um, honestly, her physique is really, really good. There's not a whole lot to work on here. Uh, she's very, very close. She's pushing the muscle to the limits. You know, there's, you know, you can't be really much more muscular than this in bikini. It's really, really close to where she needs to be. The only thing I can see on her physique, and when I'm looking at it in the in this picture, it's a little bit easier to see. I would like to see just a little bit more glute in this in this outer edge, this glute medius here, just a little bit more roundness to it, a tiny bit more in the rear delt, and a little bit more width there. And, and when I look at her in the front pose, I could see her conditioning being just a tiniest bit tighter. So not a lot tighter, but just the tiniest bit, just a little bit. I think there's a little bit still to be left here on the backside of her oblique, a tiny bit left on her leg to be just fully conditioned to today's standard. Of course, we're not going off of the bikini, you know, definition because this is already too tight for the bikini definition. But based on today's standard, I think she can be a tiny bit tighter in her core, which will make her waistline a little smaller. It'll make her shoulders look bigger. And then, of course, if she can get her shoulders just a tiniest bit bigger, um, I think that she would be a very complete package. I think there's no chance of her not getting to the Olympia this year if she does makes that correct that those small corrections. Um, and, and she'll be right there again. And honestly, probably can even move up in the Olympia this year. And this is just one of those kind of one off shows. Maybe it was just a different judge. I don't know. In fifth place, we had Karen Yuen. Now, Karen Yuen, we haven't seen since 2019. So she's making a comeback here. Her last showing, she got second place in Philippines in 2019. So just a hair away from, a, from an Olympia qualification then. Um, so we haven't seen much from her. There's not much data on her since, really, since 2019. So we're seeing her come back now, and she has made some serious improvements, that's for sure. So a lot more muscle than she had in 2019. Now, there are some flaws with her physique. I can see more flaws with her physique than I can with Eureka. And again, why I'm very shocked that Eureka got sixth place. So looking at her overall physique, now great overall physique. I don't want to take away from it. But when we look at the overall roundness of the glutes, we're seeing here on her glutes, we're seeing these separation lines. You see these separation lines here and these grooves. So I'm going to put a pen right here on these grooves. You can see the clear separation of those um, of those glutes. And you don't want to see the separations line or the striation lines in the glutes in bikini. You want full round glutes without detail of like separation when you're in the back pose. When you're transitioning from front to back, you might get a little bit of striations, a little bit of like that, that glimmer of, of, you know, contraction of the striation, but you don't want to have it in that back pose. So when you look at her in this back pose, you see those striations, you see a really, really deep etched tie-in. Now, again, remember guys, these pictures the lighting there was not great. Um, it's really dark lighting, so you have to look really closely at these. But if you can't see it so well, maybe you're looking on your phone. These are some deep tie-ins, real etched tie-ins here. Even with the striation line at the end of the tie-in here, there's a striation line and a separation line of detail. And if you look at the hamstrings down here too, there is a separation line of detail um, on those hamstrings. Now, when we look at her from upper to lower body, and we look at the lower body from the back to the upper body, there is a little imbalance issue too. So her upper body is not as, as um, balanced as her lower body. Her upper body is not as developed as her lower body, I should say. Her lower body is a lot more muscular than her upper body from the back pose. 
From the front pose, it's pretty good. Um, there's The balance isn't too bad, but it's still obvious. The legs are a little bit more developed than the upper body still. Um, super capped shoulders, so a lot more capping to those shoulders than someone like Eureka. Remember, in bikini, we're not supposed to have any capping to the shoulders, right? There are There is, though. I mean, pretty much every winner has some capping, but we're not supposed to have any by definition of what the bikini... What the bikini definition is, if you look it up on NPC News Online, it says no capped shoulders, no striations, right? Those are as capped shoulders as you could pretty much get. Um, those are etched tie-ins as you could pretty much get. Those are um, super separated hamstrings. Um, and then when you look at the upper glute, you know, we don't have the round fullness of the upper glute that we want to see. And we have, you know, striations in the glute here too. So awesome job at her conditioning. But yeah, it is technically overshot for bikini for what we're shooting for in bikini with those things. So I don't see how this package beats Eureka. Um, but good for her. She got top five. She's making her way back. I'm sure she's going to make improvements along the way. I'm sure the judges told her about these things. Um, but I do think there was some oversight on the judges with this one. Um, not going to get the highest judges score rating from me when I'm looking at this. The oil, I don't think, the little oil spot on Eureka, I don't think is worse than, you know, striations in the glutes, striations in the hamstrings, imbalance from upper to lower body. I think that Eureka, as of now, I'm going through these one by one, as of now, I would have had at least at fifth place. Let's see if she would get the fourth place. And in fourth place, we have Shanae DeKiko. Hopefully I'm saying her name right. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, Shanae. Um, but Shanae had a pretty good season last year. She competed at the mile high, got fifth. The Texas Pro got third. Um, so she's been no stranger to the top five placings. I think I have those two placings right. Um, now let's go ahead and look at her physique in terms of, you know, you know, comparing her to, you know, the highest ranked person there, which is Eureka. Um, to fifth place and to um, so her being in fourth. So as far as her overall physique goes in terms of balance, I do think she's a lot more balanced um, than Karen in the previous pictures. So her balance is really spot on. There's really not a lot of issues with her overall balance. Now, I will say when I'm looking at her physique, it doesn't scream to me when I'm looking at, like if we just, and this is what I like to do sometimes is just take parts of someone and, and kind of draw them out. When I look at her shoulders and arms, and if I just were to put just this here and said, what, what level of competitor is this? I don't think many of you would pick bikini. I think most of you would pick figure. You know, maybe some of you would say she's a, a muscular wellness girl. You know, wellness is supposed to be very similar to bikini in the upper body, but they're always just a little bit more muscular. Um, but I don't think anyone would say bikini if you looked at this shoulder and arm. Some of you might even be saying women's physique. You know, this is a very, very capped shoulder. I mean, that capping of that shoulder is, I mean, that's some figure capping for sure. If if uh, this was, let's say, eight years ago, six years ago, they would have easily, she would have been in women's physique. And she probably would have been one of the tighter women in women's physique. So when we look at that, when we look at this tricep belly, the roundness of that tricep, and just the overall size of the arm, it is pretty muscular. I think it is past the point of bikini. I think it's a little bit too far past the point of bikini in my opinion, and I think that if she were to taper that down a little bit, she would move up higher in the rankings uh, amongst the judges that are, you know, more sticking to the criteria and the known criteria. When she gets around competitors like the upper ranked level competitors, the the Ashleys, the Jennifers, the Maureens, you know, the Issa's, you're going to, she's going to outsize them and outcap them, and then it's going to be more obvious. You know, when you're at these smaller shows and there's not as many impressive physiques as those top girls, you might do pretty good there, but once you get next to all the top girls, you realize, oh, wow, she's way more muscular than them, and that's, she's pushing it way too hard. And then that's, that's an unfortunate part of bikini is that people don't learn that sometimes until it's too late. They don't get next to those competitors um, until they're at the big shows. It's pretty rare that you're going to get next to those competitors, minus Ashley, of course, at, then at those big shows. You're going to have what? You're going to have the Arnold to go after, the Olympia, and hopefully you'll even get next to them at those shows because they're going to be, you know, most likely in the first call out. And if you're looking like this, you might not even get next to them at a show like the Olympia and realize that you're too muscular. So with her, I would say really just beautiful physique, great lines, great overall fullness and roundness, but you got to slow down with the arm development, got to slow down with the shoulder development. If you're pumping backstage, maybe don't pump so much. That's going to help you amongst more of the competitors. There's going to be those one-off shows where you do get it. It's going to send you the wrong message. But this, these shoulders and these arms, when you look at these arms back here too, especially in this back pose, really, really muscular. Conditioning is crazy tight. You know, Remember we talked about the lighting here is not the best, and you can still see a fully etched tie-in here without 
the uh, the lighting being so great. So um, what I'm what I'm what it's looking like more and more at this show. It's looking like the judge, whoever judged this show, really pushed the boundaries of muscle and conditioning. And and Eureka brought a very similar look that she did at the Olympia. And now remember, the Olympia, it's the best judges, the best panel of judges, and they're all going to make a collective decision on what fits the bikini criteria the most. And if you look at Maureen and you compare who's, so you'd say who's the closest to Maureen in this group in terms of their conditioning right now, as of, as of right now, it would be Eureka, right? Um, as of the muscle, as far as the muscle fullness goes, as of right now, probably closer to Eureka too. Um, you know, when we talk about how much muscle, the, um, Shanae here is, is quite a bit more muscular than Maureen if we were to pull them up side by side. So let's go ahead and go into that reference. As a comparison, you know, you're probably saying, Adam, you're being too hard. You know, she's not that muscular, right? Remember, this is the standard, okay? So Maureen Blanquisco is the standard for bikini for 2023. She is the current world champion, okay? There's no denying that. Last year, Jennifer Dory was the standard. Every time a judge brought up pictures, I said, how close is this person to Jennifer Dory, right? So again, how close are Shanae's shoulders and arms to Maureen's? Let's take a close look at those and see, is it even close, right? Look at this back shoulder and arm. Look at the capping of this shoulder arm. Look at the overall detail and the, the hardness of that arm comparatively, right? It is night and day. Look at the core between the both of them, right? This is peeled lean. This is bikini conditioning, soft and full, but still lean, of course, right? So remember, guys, we're shooting for this. And if you coaches are out there watching this, competitors are out there watching this, yes, it's cool to be super striated and detailed and capped. But remember, you're, you're trying to do bikini, right? There is a limit to it. And you might do well at a smaller show where there's not as many big names or maybe the judging's a little bit off, which in this particular case, I do think the judging was a little bit off. I think that they got very far away from the Olympia criteria with how I'm seeing the judging going so far. Maybe as I move my way up, I haven't looked closely at all the pictures. As I move my way up, we'll see if they got it a little bit right as we get closer to one and two. And next up, we have Anna Baggio. I think that she actually looks amazing. I really love her look. We're going to go into a couple things, a couple little mistakes she made. Now, I don't have any contest history of her. I think this might be her pro debut, actually. Um, if it's not, I don't have it. There's no other contest history. This is the first uh, recorded show that she did as a pro that I've seen. So, Looking at her overall physique, I think she did a great job. And then when we're talking about overall muscularity, now obviously bikini has pushed the level of muscularity and conditioning, especially since 2018, and it's, it's remarkably different from 2017 to now. Um, but this, this overall conditioning, I think, is pretty good. I think it's pretty spot on. I don't think it is over the top. I think that it is where the standards are of today when we talk about, you know, the, if you look at the top five, maybe a little bit harder than Maureen, but not like crazy peeled. When we look at her tie-ins, again, really good tie-ins, but they're not etched in. So there's a fine line between uh, a sign of a tie-in, full tie-ins, and etched-in tie-ins, right? She's at that full tie-in stage without being etched in, and that's a, difficult, that's a difficult balance to have. That's kind of the hardest thing for a coach to do these days is like, okay, how hard do we push it? We don't want the hamstring separation. We don't want a full etched tie-in. We still need fullness. We don't want any striations. We want a full tie-in, but not etched. So it's like it's this hard balance that you have to find. And a lot of it has to come down to, you know, how hard you're going to push it, how you're going to fill them up, um, and how hard you're, um, how, how you're posing. That's going to be a big difference, too, because you might be completely shredded in your hamstrings if you push too hard. So then in that scenario, you might need to develop bigger glutes to not push as hard and still have tie-ins that aren't etched, right? So there's all this kind of crazy science to get that, that look there. It takes a very experienced and knowledgeable coach to kind of get that look. And I think that she nailed it. You know, I think that she did a really good job. I don't think that her shoulders are crazy. They're definitely big. Um, when we look at her overall shoulders, there are there is some capping to them, which is what, you know, which is happening bikini. But you can see a clear difference on the shoulder size of, of her and Shanae. Um, there's not the overall crazy graininess and detail and like just that that shrink wrapped skin look that we don't want in bikini. So this is a good fullness. Now, a couple things I think that she did wrong on her overall package. One, her hair is touching her glutes. You know, you never want your hair long enough to touch your glutes. Honestly, you should have your hair cut a little bit shorter so you can see the, the lower, just a tiny bit of the lower back so you get the full 3D effect out of the glutes. Um, this suit color, again, I don't know if this is lighting, but this suit color looks a little bit kind of orangish, like a orangish red. Maybe it's the, the, the lighting itself, but either way, um, not really great contrast to her skin tone. You can see this very monochromatic look. You know, the skin tone is very, very close to that suit color. I think if she wore a different color suit, 
Um, I'm not a huge fan of the lip color either. If she wore a different color suit, um, brought this same, same package with uh, her hair cut a little bit shorter um, and, and a different color lip, I honestly think that that would be a, a just, she doesn't really need to change that much at all. I think she just needs to compete and get known uh, and, and get, that, get that look because she has a really, really good physique. I can see her climbing. Um, I don't doubt that she'll get to the Olympia this year if she puts in, you know, a few shows and, and makes those corrections. But this suit, it's just you're going to get lost. You know, you don't pop. You're going to get lost in the, gr in the crowd. But let's, let's, for example, look at a different color suit on her and look at how it works. So um, let's put a – I'm going to draw on her a like a turquoise suit and just look at the difference of that pop. Just that alone does – for her suit. So just look at the difference of what that does for her in terms of her overall contrast and pop. Like your eye goes a lot more to her in a group of people. She's going to have that wow factor. You know, you kind of, she gets lost with that monochromatic suit. It's very close to her skin tone. So if you're picking a suit color, pick something that has some contrast. Everyone has their undertones of their skin at a certain way. You know, I have yellow undertones in my, my skin. So me picking a yellow or orange suit probably wouldn't make much sense, right? So pick a suit, pick a suit color that is contrasting to your skin tone with the tan on. Picking a suit is not the time for you to say, oh, I like pink, you know, or I like orange. Like that's not the time for that. Think of the suit as a uniform for you to play your sport. And that is it. You know, if you're, if you got drafted to the Denver Broncos, and, and that's the uniform they give you and you don't look good in orange, too bad. You're wearing orange because you're on the Denver Broncos. Same thing with bikini, okay? If, if you don't like purple, but purple looks really good on you on stage, whatever. Wear the purple suit while you're on stage because it looks best on you and that's how you're going to do best in that sport, right? So um, when you're outside, wear whatever color you want, but pick something that makes sense for you on stage. It's going to get you get some light on you. It's going to create some contrast and so the judges see you right away. So next up, we have Sarah Choi. Sarah Choi got second place at this show. And I'm going to go into Sarah's physique and, um, and go into a few different things with her overall physique. So the first thing I want to talk about is overall presentation. One of the things the judges want to see from you when you're on stage is that you're looking bikini fitness model. You're having fun. You're on the beach. You're just, you know, you just woke up looking that way. It's this healthy, fun, vibrant look where you're just, you know, you're a fitness model and you're smiling and you're this and that. Where is she, what is she missing out of that package, right? So not seeing any, you know, really, it looks like she's not having a blast up there. You know, she's not smiling. And I was like, okay, it's just one picture, right? Maybe she just, she got into it. But here's, there is a lot of pictures of her in this front pose. And there is no smile in any point of these pictures. So I think that that really hurts your overall presentation when you're not giving that, like, glimmer of, of happiness to the to the stage you know it makes you look like you're more tired makes you look like you've been more sucked down um for the show like you really had to grind for it and you're just kind of trying to get through the posing routine but all the way through the expression never changes you don't see that light on her you know when you see someone come out off stage and they're they're smiling and they're having fun you know yeah you can do the the no smile kind of sexy look um, here and there, but this is um, beyond that. You don't get to a smile till you're way, way in there, and then it goes away again too. So something that can really help with is overall presentation is, you know, looking like you're having a good time up there. And you, I'm going through all these pictures, and there's no smile. So I mean, I've gone through, I don't know, 30 pictures. The photographer here took a ton of pictures, so it gives us a lot of different looks. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just a one-off. Nope, all the way through the posing routine. I think I saw teeth once. So something that can really help her would be her overall um, with her overall presentation, just look like you're having fun up there, guys. You know, look like you're just having the time of your life, you know? So um, the judges recognize these things, especially at the upper levels. Everything matters, your presentation, your hair, your makeup, complexion, like looking confident. Like that's, there's things that you can't even put into words. It's like, just, you got to look confident. Like, oh, how do I do that? Well, <laughs> you know, smile, look like you're having fun. Look like you haven't killed yourself to get to the show. Even though you probably have killed yourself to get the show on stage, make it look like it's just a normal Tuesday and you just woke up and you decided you're going to go to the beach that day and throw on a bikini. That's how it's supposed to, supposed to feel when you go into it. So let's look at, you know, how I would have judged this and how I would have had her. So I don't see a way where she beats Anna in this show with her overall conditioning on her lower body and with her overall balance on her lower body. I don't see how she beats Eureka with her, her lower body conditioning. Um, I would have her probably in the fifth to sixth place uh, ranking out of the top six people. I do think that Shanae is, is significantly better than her, but she's so hard that she might, and Shanae might end up getting sixth place. 
just based on conditioning. That tends to be the way judges go. Like if you're if you're a little too hard or a little too muscular, usually you'll get hit worse than someone who's a little softer for some reason. It's like even though even though it's harder to be harder and more muscular than it is to be softer, usually the people who are harder, they went too far, they get hit worse than people who are a little bit softer. It's like it's like you go to the limit, it's like boom, bottom back of the line. So um, I would have her based on how the judges usually score. I'd probably have her in fifth out of this group, and I'd have, probably have Shanae um, in sixth. I would definitely be moving Eureka up. Um, as of as of now, I would have Eureka and Anna, right? Anna. As of now, I would have Eureka and Anna probably tied for one and two um, based on what I'm seeing. But I haven't gone into the first place yet. So let's jump into who won the show and why they won the show. And that is Natalia Conkton. Natalia Conkton wins the Japan Pro. Did the judges get it right when we're looking at the winner, at least, which is the most important one to get right, you know? The other ones, there might be a little bit off, but is she the winner? And that's all that matters because it's not about points this year. Who cares about points? It's about uh, a win and you're in this year. So, you know, first place is really the only super important one. Though I do think Eureka got a little bit screwed in this one, if I'm being honest. Um, I think that Anna could have moved up too. And I think that, uh, I do think when I'm looking at these pictures of, of first place, I do think they got it right. She looks really, really good. So I'm very impressed with her overall physique. Um, you know, she is, she's pushing the limits, you know, in bikini these days, it's hard to tell where that limit is in terms of muscularity. Some girls are going to be allowed to have a little bit more muscle. Some girls are going to have a little bit less. Um, but it's not over the top crazy where I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so much muscle, you know? So, um, looking at her overall physique, it's balanced from upper to lower body. Her, um, from front to back, she's balanced. She's not overly grainy. You know, you see a deep tie-in, but it's not an etched deep tie-in. There's a tiny bit of detail on the hamstrings, but not crazy detail on the hamstrings where it's fully separated. Um, good shoulder to good, good ratios of shoulder to back. I do think her hips are really, really wide. So there is a slight imbalance of her glutes to the rest of her upper body. Um, she could probably correct that with posing and maybe not pushing as hard, but in terms of the front pose, there doesn't seem to be any problem with her, her, um, balance issues. Arms pushing it a little bit, right? But this was a very muscular show. Um, so I don't know if that's going to work for her at the bigger shows. But I think this is a couple corrections would be, you know, try to correct this. The, the hips looking so wide in the back pose by maybe not pushing as far back. That way your shoulders aren't as far away from your hips. And you're, you're not creating that, that distance of hips closer to the judges. So your shoulders don't look smaller that way. If your shoulders are a little bit farther closer to your glutes, your shoulders look a little bigger and more balanced. So that's something that she can correct. She has the tie-ins where she doesn't need to push that hard to do that. And she's also showing some hamstring separation, which might be hurting her. So that, and then pull that arm back a tiny bit, and that's going to be a much better package for her. And it's just these minute details that are going to be, that are going to make her go to the top. And I think that she has actual potential of going to the top. This is someone you probably should keep an eye on this year because her physique is pretty insane and she hasn't reached her potential yet. So all in all, judging score from one to six, I'm going to, out of, out of a, out of a five points, I'm going to give it a three. I think it was okay. Judging score out of first place, I'm going to give it a five. I think out of all the competitors there, she does meet the criteria the best of what who is winning. Um, you know, there's an argument for Eureka, but honestly, with that oil on her, I probably wouldn't give it to her either, considering this was her opposition. So congratulations to you. Welcome to the Olympia this year. Very excited to see you there. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. We're going to be doing these after almost every show this year, if I can keep up. <laughs> but right now, it's time to go to the Arnold. I hope to see some of you there. Make sure to say hi. We'll be there on Thursday at the Meet the Athletes. I'll be cruising around somewhere, so come up, say hi, and let me know what you think about the judging in this first show. Thanks so much. Remember to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. I'm thirsty for comments. Talk to you guys next time.